Who would have thunk it? You come to prison, and the first thing that you're going to do is play Simon Says. Is everybody familiar with Simon Says? Now, come on. Obviously, you've never been in prison before. Is everybody familiar with Simon Says? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. A uh, little twist, though. For those that are outside guests, if you're eliminated, you have to spend the night. <laughs> for our men in blue, for our men in blue, if you're eliminated, you still got to spend the night. So let's begin. Simon says, raise your right hand if you travel from out of state to attend this TEDx event. Simon says, look around and see who attended from out of state for this event. Simon says, put your right hand down. Simon says, if you traveled an hour or more to attend this TEDx event, raise your left hand. Simon says, take a look around and see who traveled an hour or more to attend this event. Simon says, put your left hand down. Simon says... If you're excited about hearing about a life worth living, put both your hands in the air. Okay, put your hands down. Oh. Yes, some of you are staying and some of you are not leaving. Simon says, go ahead and put your hands down. Give yourselves a round of applause. Obviously, somebody comes out and the last thing you think you're going to do is play Simon Says. That should tell you that there's something different about this prison. Um, this prison isn't like what you see on TV or in the movies. Its staff are different. Its men in blue are different. So what I ask is that you take every preconceived notion that you have about prison and you drop it immediately. Take every preconceived notion that you have about prison and drop it before you judge this prison. My story begins as a social worker, obviously, by education and training. Who else would come out and do Simon Says besides a social worker? Started my career in social work in 1993. Uh, been a social worker since that time. Started my career in corrections 16 years ago at this prison. Noteworthy to mention that this is the only prison that I've worked at. I came into this prison saying I was going to change lives. I was going to be cutting edge. I was going to treat men in blue like human beings. I was going to let them call me Jason. I was going to know something about each and every one of them. Their name, their number, something about their family. Sounds like a social worker, doesn't it? I didn't know if I was allowed to do it. Didn't know if, how, if I could do it or how to do it. I just knew I was going to do it. And you know what? I came in saying, if they don't like it, they can fire me. They could fire me. The reality is that the men in these walls have changed my life. And the relationships that I've had with them have changed my life. But that was inside prison. Outside prison, I was a 26-year-old man, single, came from a middle-class family. Mother at that point was a nurse for 26 years. Father, a laborer, a mechanic for an equivalent amount of time. I um, like the social life, which is the nice version of saying I like to party. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, didn't really have a plan. I should say I didn't have a life plan. Pretty, by my own accounts, pretty self-centered. Uh, wasn't particularly kind to women, um, regretfully. Um, really didn't know where I was going in life. Um, my wife, Hillary, would typically say, um, we have an expression, just wasn't a kind human. Uh, and I hate using this reference, but a lot of my behavior and conduct could have landed me in prison. Odd, huh? By day, trying to change lives. By night, damaging them. But little did I know that this prison, its staff, and the men in blue would transform my entire life over the last 16 years. I could have never predicted that. I could have never imagined that. Now, I think I'm a pretty kind man. I think I'm a nice human. I have a life plan, and it really is about changing lives. 
It's about changing lives of every man, person, human being that comes into contact with me inside these walls and outside of these walls. Now, I'm kind to one particular woman, Hillary, my wife. And I think she would call me husband of the year. Well, or at least I would tell her to call me husband of the year. (laughs) But in all seriousness, what these walls have offered me at this prison, I can never repay. Offender 211778, Billy Archie, lives in J Block, second cell, bottom bunk, likes NASCAR racing, likes mechanical things, likes cool air, been incarcerated since 1989, been at this prison since 1992. If you talk to Archie, you'll hear one of three things, if not all of these things. You'll hear, I got no family on the streets. The prison staff are my only family, and I'll likely die in this place. Now, we could treat him as if he was just an inmate. We couldn't care about us. We could not care about his quality of life and who he was as a human being and treat him as an inmate. And when I say we, I mean our staff and the men in blue. Fast forward, Archie in the present, sitting on a bench at his job, next to a sign that says, out of place. A rule violation, ironically. (laughs) Yeah. Now, refer back to the we. We could say he broke a rule. We could lock him up in what we call segregation or solitary confinement, but we don't. And probably much to Archie's regret on some days, we don't because he's a part of this prison. But much to his benefit, because he's a part of this prison... He's treated like a human being, and he wasn't harmed, injured, or locked up in the making of this movie. I should say photo. (laughs) Sorry. I I want to tell you about my who'd have thunk it list. A lot of people asked me about my grammar and what that meant and what was the meaning. And really, as working at this prison, I've created a who'd have thunk it list. The things that I couldn't imagine would ever go on in a prison. So, first who'd have thunk it that we're the fourth largest population in the entire state of Ohio out of 28 prisons with 2,600 men in blue. But we are fourth from the bottom in prison violence in all those states, in all those agencies, I'm sorry, facilities. Who'd have thunk that we did over 509,000 hours of community service last year? 509,000 hours of community service. And our goal this year is to do over 600,000. Who'd have thunk that you'd be coming to a TEDx event in a prison? Who'd, Who'd have thunk it that we would have visitors from Moldova, Romania, Saudi Arabia, Great Britain, from all over this world coming to see programming at this prison? I got a long list, so you're going to be clapping for a while. Um, So who'd have thunk that we had had staff that would raise pumpkins annually to give back to the community? Who'd have thunk that we would have a prison ministry theater that annually would host two plays, performed, written, designed, hosted by Men in Blue and our staff at Christmas and Easter time? Who'd have thunk it that my wife, Hillary, would come into this prison looking for a scared straight program I told her, you that stuff doesn't work. You need to come see what we're doing. And later, she would walk out with a husband of the year. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it that we have a staff and men in blue that care about being green? And as part of that initiative, this year we will donate over 4,000 pounds of vegetables to the community and those in need. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it that I would have 2,600 men and over 483 staff ask me on a daily basis or tell me on a daily basis they pray or ask me on a daily basis about my mother who's fighting a terminal illness. Who'd have thunk it because of this prison 
that I would sit down with my mother and father and have the toughest conversation I've ever had with them in my entire life about wanting to meet my biological father and that they would give me permission to do so. And I would do that. And in doing so, I had the greatest discovery of all, that the parents I had were absolutely the parents I needed. And they had made me absolutely the person I had become. Who'd have thunk that? Who'd have thunk, and sometimes this is my hardest one, who'd have thunk that I'd be involved in burying men in a cemetery on our property? Because they have no family or friends to claim them. Or if they have family and friends to claim them, they don't have the financial means to do so. Who'd have thunk that? The relationships that I've had with staff and men in blue have infiltrated my personal life. They have laid a foundation of what I believe is good character in the man you see before you. What did you think when I first came out on the stage? What was your first impression? What did you think when you saw the young photo of Archie and the old photo of Archie? Do you think that sometimes stereotyping Labels, appearances, make us react or make snap decisions about an individual or a group of individuals, especially a group of individuals that are not only working in this environment, but live in this environment. Do you think sometimes we're too quick to judge? Do you think sometimes we're too quick to judge? What this prison has to offer you would amaze you. What its staff and its men in blue have created is astonishing. You'd have to see it to believe it. I'll leave you with one last stereotype, and it's my favorite. I came into corrections thinking a warden was a 50-year-old something, white male, overweight, mean, gruff. Oh, yeah, you had to throw in, obviously, you smoked a cigar. Sixteen years later, who'd have thunk it? I'm standing up here before you, and I'm the warden. 